Secondly, after my pranam, thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Guru's Guru, to Srila Prabhupada, and to our entire Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to all of my dear Vaishnava brothers and sisters. Swayam Bhagavan, Sri Krishna himself, adorned with the astonishing sentiments and complexion of his most dearly beloved Shimati Radhika, appeared in this world, in this Kali Yuga, in 1486, in Mayapur, Navadip Dharab, in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this incarnation, Krishna, in his Gaura Swarup, he wanted to distribute, he wanted to give what no incarnation had ever given before. Many avatars of the Lord came to this world. Many acharyas came to this world. And they have distributed bhakti. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to distribute bhakti rasa. Bhakti rasa. And for this, he pointed towards the supreme of all scriptures, Grantaraj, Srimad Bhagavatam. You see, there are many traditions, there are many lines of gurus, sampradayas, especially in this age of Kali, Mahatma Sampradaya, Ramanuja Sampradaya, Nimbarka Sampradaya, 
विष्णु स्वामी सब पढ़ रहे हैं एंड दे ऑनर द वेदर्स वेदांत एंड द पुराणस अमंग द पुराणस देयर आर ग्रेट टेक्स्ट लाइक विष्णु पुराण पद्म पुराण भागवत पुराण बट दे डोंट गिव एनी स्पेशल पोजीशन टू श्रीमद् भागवतम बट श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु जोर्ज कृष्ण भक्ति रस स्वरूप श्री भगवान सर्व वेद शास्त्र होते परम महत्व श्रीमद् भागवतम इज भक्ति रस स्वरूप द इम्बोडिमेंट ऑफ द लिक्विड मेलोस ऑफ द वेरियस डिवाइन फ्लेवर्स ऑफ लव फॉर श्री कृष्ण एंड फॉर दैट रीजन श्रीमद् भागवतम सर्व वेद शास्त्र होते परम महत्व its importance is far above and beyond the importance of any other vedic text shila vyasadev he had given mahabharat bhagavad gita vedanta sutra so many puranas but still he was dissatisfied he wasn't satisfied then when his guru pada padma sri narad muni came to him and blessed him then he went into trans bhakti yoga na manasi samyak pranita yamale apasam purusha punam mayam chatar basvayam and in his trans he saw shrimad bhagavatam and then manifested so shrimad bhagavatam was shila vyasadev's final contribution to the world and after revealing shrimad bhagavatam shila vyasadev was satisfied why Yes, mean to stay to get to stop. Because when Krishna is satisfied, then you become satisfied. Before, Sri Krishna wasn't fully satisfied with him. Why? Sri Vyasadev had glorified Krishna so much, but he had not glorified Shrimati Radhika and the gopis of Vrindavan. He had not revealed deeply the glories of their ecstatic love, so Krishna was not satisfied. but when sila vyasadev manifested shrimad bhagavatam with the very beautiful expressions of love of the gopis of vrindavan the five geets venu geet pranay geet gopi geet yugal geet and brahmara geet when sila vyasadev manifested this and radhika was glorified to the highest degree then krishna was so pleased and when krishna was satisfied then shila vyasadev was satisfied so he put his pen to rest and he didn't write anything after that it was now perfect so shri chaitanya mahaprabhu revealed this special position of shri bhagavata it is the embodiment of bhakti rasamrita the nectar of bhakti So Sri Vyasadev in his Mangala Charanam auspicious invocation of Shri Bhagavatam there he said Nigam kalpataro galitam palam shukhamuka damrita drava samyutam pibat bhagavatam rasamalayam muhuravo rasika bhuvi bhavuka Oh expert and thoughtful men you are those of you who are the connoisseurs of relishing the sweetness of bhakti rasa drink this shrimad bhagavatam through your ears again and again pibat bhagavatam rasam alayam but alayam lay means liberation drink it up to the point when you're liberated muhuro and again drink it even after liberation that means even those sages who are already beyond this world find astonishing taste in the verses in the words even in the syllables of sri mad bhagavata and alai lai also means liberation it also means devastation or the state of fainting in other words people to bhagavata or samalayam hear this beautiful sri mad bhagavata until you faint in ecstasy mohur and again when you wake up here to get and fight again mm-hmm. this is the occupation of the pure 
Vaishnavas, the pure rasic Vaishnavas of Sri Krishna, tasting, fainting, waking, fainting again, drowning in the nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam because it's a nigamakalpatro galitam pilam. Shukamukha adam rita drapa samyatam. It is a liquid juice of the mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedas. The Vedas are like a desire tree. Whatever you want, you can get from the Vedas. What do you want? You want to be a king? Okay, there's a yagya you can do in your next life, you can be a king. Do you want to go to heaven? Oh, there's a yagya you can do. Okay, good. Do you want 20 children? Oh, there's a yagya you can do to get sons. And so whatever you want, you can go to the Vedas and fulfill the, those desires. So the Vedas are a desire tree. However, you can take from the Vedas what you want. But what do the Vedas want to give you? So what does the tree want to give you? It's fruit. So that the fruit of the Vedas is this Srimad Bhagavatam. And unlike other fruits, like mangoes, mangoes are very juicy and delicious. But you don't eat the skin. The skin you have to throw away. And the pip, you don't eat the pip either. You throw it away. But this fruit of Srimad Bhagavatam has no skin and no pip. It is a pure nectar. Drava Samyutam. And it is completely liquid. What does that mean, completely liquid? Shukamukha Adamrita Drava Samyutam. Just as when a mango is ripe, but if a power tool come and peck the mango and break the skin a little, then it becomes even sweeter. So because this Srimad Bhagavatam has been touched by the lips of Shukadeva Goswami, the son of Yasudeva, it has become even sweeter. And it is liquid. Why is it liquid? Oh, that is a great mystery. Why is it considered liquid? Because liquid flows down. Quick demonstration. <laughs> Liquid flows down. So this divine rasa flows by itself down from Shukadeva Goswami to Sutta Goswami to Shonakarishi. And in this way, through the Guru Parampara, and it reaches us. And how, how does it flow? In Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the text of Srila Rupa Goswami, that is written by the inspiration of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to reveal the nectar, the Rasa Amrita of Srimad Bhagavatam. There he is explained, Aisham Swa Parasambandha Niyamo Nirnayo Hi Yaha Sadaranyam Tadevuktam Bhavanam it means if there is an audience and they're sitting like as you are sitting and listening to the sweet pastimes of Krishna described in Srimad Bhagavatam then those who are they have ekagrata, chitta one pointed, they're listening with one pointed attention. Tasmare kena manasi. Then they become absorbed in those beautiful pastimes. And they begin to identify with the feelings of the devotees in that leela. It may be that they're hearing the pastime of Madhya Shoda running after baby Krishna who's broken the pot of yogurt in the kitchen. She's trying to catch him and bind him. So they become absorbed in thinking of love for Krishna from the perspective of Madhya Shodhi. They may be thinking of the gopis of Vrindavan who've been abandoned in the middle of the night by Sri Krishna and they're weeping on the bank of Jamuna. And the devotees who are listening are listening so attentively and they become so absorbed in the personalities, the characters in Srimad Bhagavatam. Aisham Swaparasambandha they lose awareness of whether this emotion they're hearing about belongs to a person in the story or to themselves. They lose the sense of discrimination. Whether they are a listener sitting here 
listening to a guitar, or whether they are a person within the lila. And at that time, the transcendental ecstatic brain, the love of the associates of Krishna in this eternal lila, don't think that Krishna's lila was 5,000 years ago and you missed it. Krishna's lila is nitya lila. And at that moment, when the flow of Harikata is going, it's manifesting there and then. And Krishna is present with all of his associates. And so those who are absorbed in identifying with them, then their eternal ecstatic love, nitya siddhasya bhavasya prakatyam bhidhisadhyata, it overflows from them and it goes into the hearts of the audience of those who are listening. And they experience bhakti rasa. And therefore it is said, this rasa is a liquid. Of the mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures, because when the pure Vaishnava speaks Srimad Bhagavatam, the Leela manifests there and then, and the ecstatic Prema Rasa flows from the hearts of Krishna's associates and it runs down and fills the hearts of the audience. And then they in turn they speak these pastimes to the next generation, and this is called the Bhagavat Parampara. It is a parampara. It may be diksha proper, there may be diksha involved in Asia or no diksha involved. But where the rasa is flowing down from the eternal lila, from generation to generation, through the medium of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, that is called Bhagavat Prampara. Shukamukadamrita Drabasamyata. Why has this nectar of Srimad Bhagavatam become more beautiful, being touched by the lips of Shukadeva Swami? Because Shukadev Goswami is a Rasik Shiraman. He's a crushed jewel of the connoisseurs of transcendental love. And so he's presented the Leelas of Krishna in such a wonderful way that the Rasa of this Leela becomes fully ripe and fully mature. For example, Simon Bhagavan. Canto 10. Chapter 21 is called Vainugi. Are some of you familiar with Vainugi? So there is described how Krishna is quite young and the gopis of Vrindavan are quite young. And they have not met closely with each other yet. Only they they see Krishna leaving the village in the morning, going out to take the cows to graze in the pastures, in the foothills of Giraj Govardhan. And they feel separation from him during the day, and they're yearning for him to return in the evening. And when Krishna goes to the forest, he begins to play his flute. And just as you ignite a fire in wood, and that fire that was already present in the wood as a potential bursts out and the wood is turns to ash. So in the same way, the sound of Sri Krishna's flute ignites a fire in the heart of the young coward damsels of Bridget, the fire of Anurag, deep love. And that burns to ash all their dedication to Vedic Dharma, even Sarva Dharma Brijaja. It burns their shyness, the fear of their elders and their relatives. And they very strongly make a sankalpa avow, samharada, I must meet with Krishna. Not for their own happiness, but for Sri Krishna's happiness. Because when Sri Krishna plays upon his flute, he plays in such a karun rag, such a pathetic melody that gopis feel that if I don't go and meet with him, he may die. He's calling me. He cannot live without me. I must go there at any cost. So there, Bhaj gopis have said, Gopya kima charatayam kushulam smabhinu Jamodarara sudam api gopikara Krishna has gone into the forest. 
and the Prati Gopis are kept in their homes by their mother-in-laws and other family members. But they can hear the sound of his flute. And one says to her, Sakhi, a friend, O oh, Sakhi, what austerities did Krishna's flute perform in a previous lifetime? I want to know, in a previous life, where did Krishna's flute take baths? Which holy places? Which pilgrimages did he go on? What fasts did he perform? What brats, what mantra did he chant? That in this life, he has the chance to always be with Krishna. So these words are filled with jealousy, actually. The love for Krishna is so intense that they feel jealous of a piece of bamboo. Because this bamboo is always in Krishna's hand. He tucks it in his belt, he sticks it in his turban sometimes. Even when he goes to sleep at night, he keeps it under his pillow. And when it's time to play the flute, then, with his fingers, he caresses the body of the flute and kisses the mouth of the flute. And then, he's not actually playing a tune. Hmm? Gopis don't think that Krishna's playing a tune on the flute. But rather, when Krishna kisses the flute, then the flute in ecstasy goes, Let's do. <laughs> The flute itself is singing in the ecstasy. Yeah. With the touch of the lips of Krishna. Hmm? So, Gopya Kimacha Dayam Koshalam Sabeno. What austerities, my dear Saki, did this flute perform in a previous life? Damodara Adara Sudam Api Gopi Kavanam that this flute is drinking the nectar of the lips of Damodar, Sri Krishna. Damodar refers to Sri Krishna who was bound by the ropes of love. He's submissive to the love of his devotees. Abhigopikanam means, you know that Krishna is a, a gopa, a cowherd boy, and we are gopis. So the nectar of his lips belongs to us. But this flute is just a piece of bamboo. How come he's stealing the nectar of Krishna's lips right before us? Himself is enjoying. Swayam means independently. One of the symptoms of brain. Sarva bhuteshu ya pasyat bhagavat bhavam atmana. Is those who are Mahabhagavat on the highest level of brain, when they look, they see their own love in everyone else. As they love Krishna, they see that love in others, moving and non moving living entities, while themselves they feel, I have no love at all. This is the symptom of brain of the Mahabhagavat. So the gopis are thinking, oh, the love that they have, they see it in the flute. So they are sakis, they are friends of Radhika. And among gopis, there is a group leader. And the group leader meets with Krishna, and the sakis, the friends, they arrange for the group leader to meet with Krishna. They sometimes dance with Krishna themselves, but not independently, not without the permission of the group leader. So one gopi is saying, look at this flute, he's independently meeting with Krishna and kissing him without any permission from Radhika. This is a terrible thing. And just see that if a child becomes successful in their life, how do the parents feel? Very happy, very happy. So who are the parents of this flute? The, the flute came from the bamboo trees on the bank of the Jamuna. So the mother of the flute is the Jamuna River. Because she's just as a mother gives breast milk and nourishes a child, so the Jamuna is nourishing the trees on the bank of the Jamuna. And the other trees, they're the, they're the dynasty of the, of the flute. So when Sri Krishna is wandering on the bank of the Jamuna, takes the flute to his lips and begins to play. Then, the river Jamuna becomes full of joy because the lotus is in the river all open, like eyes looking. And the trees on the bank of Jamuna, they're also in ecstasy 
and they begin to cry in the form of honey dripping from the honeycombs in their branches. So gopis are saying, just see. If I were to go and meet with Krishna, then my parents would be very upset. Right? They would be very upset because gopis are not married to Krishna, they're married to others. And their love for him is secret. Hmm? But this flute is so fortunate that the, whole, the mother, father, and the whole dynasty of this flute, when he meets with Krishna, then they're all smiling with lotus flowers and crying with honey. So how much fortunate this flute is compared to me? Or another meaning, you know, Srimad Bhagavatam, every verse, every word, every letter has not one meaning, but many, many meanings. It is unlimited. Krishna Tulya Bhagavat Vibhu Savasvai Prati Sloke Prati Akare Nara Artakare Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, Just as Krishna is all-powerful, all-pervading, and the greatest, so is Srimad Bhagavatam. Just as Krishna is the shelter of all existence, so is Srimad Bhagavatam. Prati Sloke Prati Akare Nara Artakare In every verse, no, in every letter of Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, there are many, many meanings. So here one meaning. Bhumte swayam vyata vasishta rasa pradinyo rishapta to sumukus tarabo yatharyaha. Just see the Arya, the elder relatives are weeping. By this Radharani is thinking, oh, my mother-in-law, Jatila, she's an old woman. But even she, being an old woman, when she sees how young and beautiful and attractive she Krishna is, and when he plays upon his flute, then she cries, fire on me, fire on me. Why was I not born so many years later? If I were young, then I could meet with him. But alas, alas, I was born too soon. So the, the Radharani is thinking, oh, the older, the older generation, they're crying that they cannot be related to Krishna in a romantic mood. So this is, this is some example of Vainu Gita. It is the bhav, the ecstasy called Purva Rag. The love that the gopis of Vrindavan feel, Purva Rag, before they had the chance to meet closely with Krishna. So there's rasa in this. In this love there's rasa. But this rasa is, is the fruit in which this rasa exists is in a stage called Tarunavasta. It's young. You know, when, when fruit first appears on the tree, then the juice is not fully sweet. So it's in the state, the fruit is in the state Tarunavasta. It's a, it's a young fruit. So Sukadev Goswami is introducing the Prema rasa in its young stage. Gradually, his Qatar of Srimad Bhagavatam is unfolding. He comes to chapter 29. In chapter 29, see Krishna can no longer tolerate separation from the gopis. And gopis can no longer tolerate separation from him. So Bhagavana Pitara Tri Shad Utfulla Malvika Vikshurantam Manas Chakre Yoga Maya Upashitaha. Shukadev Goswami says that on the full moon night of the Sharad season, the autumn season. Then, Vikshurantam Manastakri, Krishna made up his mind, tonight will be the night. He went to his bedroom, he told his friends, I am very tired, I want to have a long sleep, stay outside my room and guard my door, make sure no one comes in. And then he closed the door and his coward boyfriend slept outside the door and they rested and took turns to guard that no one should come in. And then Krishna escaped over the balcony and into the forest, going through the forest in the middle of the night from Nandagaon. Gradually, gradually, he made his way to Bangsi Bhatt in Vrindavan. Sriman Rasarasarambi Bangsi Karshan Venus Vaner Gopi Gopinata Sriestuna and standing beneath the Bhangsipat tree, Krishna took his flute to his lips and began to play. In his heart, he was simply seeing the face of Brishubhanu Nandini, the daughter of Brishubhanu Maharaj, 
Srimati Radhika. And he was thinking of her just like an archer. Perhaps you know, when the Pandavas were young and they were in the Gurukul of Dronacharya, at that time Dronacharya was asking his students, aim your arrow at the bird in the tree. So he asked the student, aim, tell me what you see. He said, I see the tree, I see the sky, he said, sit down. He called another one, aim your arrow, what do you see? I see the branch, I see the bird. Let's sit down. Then he called Arjun. Arjun, aim your arrow. Arjun aimed his arrow. Dronacharya said, what do you see? He said, the eye of the bird. Anything else? No, I only see the eye of the bird. So just as an archer, expert archer, is completely focused on his target, in the same way, Sri Krishna's heart was completely focused on the beautiful smiling face of Simanti Radhika. And in that way he began to play and he was aiming the sound of his flute mm. to her. But because Radhika is Krishna's Purna Shakti and all the gopis, they're not human beings, they're not ordinary young ladies. Radhika is Krishna's Purna Shakti and each gopi of Vrindavan is the Kaya Vyuharu, the expansion of Radhika. Shimati Radharani, she wants to love Krishna in thousands and thousands of different ways at the same time. So to fulfill that desire to please Krishna, she's expanded herself. Each one of her ecstatic emotions has taken a murti, a form. Her Lalit Bhag became Lalita, her Vishesh Bhag became Vishaka, her Rati became Rati Manjari, her Rupa became Rupa Manji. In this way, all the flavors of Radhika's love have become embodied in the gopis of Vrindavan. But in the Leela, by the influence of Yoga Maya, each one has an individual Abhiman, and they consider themselves cowherd girls. They have to wake up in the morning and milk the cows, churn the yogurt, collect the cow dung. Though they are superior to Lakshmi Devi herself, but they live like simple gopis, cowherd girls. So because Radhika is the origin of all, when Krishna's flute was aimed at her, it called her and she came, but all the other gopis are included in that. So they also abandoned whatever they were doing and they ran to meet with Krishna. Some of them were babysitting. And they just put down the, they didn't have babies themselves. They were babysitting their neighbor's babies. They just put the neighbor's babies down and they ran to Krishna. Some were boiling milk on the fire. They ran away and the milk boiled over. Some were making japatis on the fire. They just left and the japati burst into flames. <laughs> Some of them were putting on their cosmetics on one eye. But when they heard the sound of Krishna's flute, they could not wait. They just ran with the cosmetics only on one eye. Some of them were putting on some jewelry. They became so bewildered. They put their waist bells around their neck and the necklace around their waist. So in this way, in a state of disarray, all branch gopis came running, running, running through the forest in the middle of the night and they arrived there at the Banksy Bhatt where Krishna was playing his flute and they stood around him on all sides and when they saw him they became very shy they've just broken all the rules of Dharma they've scuppered their chances of happiness in this life and any future lives by leaving their homes and their families and their husbands just to please Krishna and they stood around him and shyly they looked down and they thought, well, Krishna called us, so we should, he should say something, he should speak first. And Krishna was thinking, no, they should speak first. So there was a, a silence, a long silence, long silence. But when it comes to the male and female temper temperament of being stubborn, then the ladies always win. So Krishna realized, that then they're not going to speak, so I'll have to break the silence. So Krishna spoke in a very strange way. He said, Swagatam ba mahabhaga Priyam kim karavami va Prajasanamayam kachit bruta kamanakaranam Rajanyesha gaura rupam gaura satpa nisevitam Pratiyata prajam neha Stay home, three bees of Matamaha. 
My dear Gopis, welcome to the forest of Vrindavan. It's a very official language. Welcome to the forest of Vrindavan. Why did you come here exactly? Perhaps you could, is, was there some problem in, in your house? Is that why you came here? You can tell me. Speak freely. Krishna himself called them. He drove them insane by the sound of his flute. And now they're here. He's asking, well, why did you come? It was very shocking for them. So why is he saying that? Raja in Yesha Rupa. Krishna said, this forest is very dark and full of ferocious animals. And what's more, I am a Pakka Brahmachari. So I never associate with any ladies. So I think if you've come to see the forest at night, illuminated by the moon, and now you've seen it, Pratiyata Brajam Neha Steham Sribi Subhatyama. Pratiyata Brajam, go, Pratiyata Brajam, go back to Braj. Naheya Steham, don't stay here. Go back to Braj, don't stay here. Gopis were devastated. We left everything, we abandoned everything for Krishna, and he's just sending us away. They began to mark the ground with their toenails, drawing on the ground. And tears were flowing from their eyes. Oh Krishna, it's quite improper. It's really not befitting that you speak such heartbreaking words to us who have abandoned everything just to please you, just to serve you. We have heard that a great sage named Gargacharya he said, Tasmin Nandok Najo Yamte Narayana Samo Gunai. He said to your father, O Nanda Maharaj, your son will have qualities just like Lord Narayan. So Lord Narayan is such a person, Devo Yatadi Purusho Bajate Mamukshun. If someone goes to the deity of Lord Narayan and prays, Oh my Lord, please give me mukti liberation, impersonal liberation, to enter into the Brahma Jyoti, then he he, recipro he even reciprocates with them, even though they have no desire to serve him. Huh? Right? So, yes, take liberation. Boom. What they want? Supreme Lord gives. And he benefits nothing from that. What benefit does the Supreme Lord get from someone who gets nirvana, moksha, sarupyo, sayuja mukti, impersonal liberation? Nothing. There's no love, there's no bhakti in that at all. But still he reciprocates. So we have heard that Gaga Muni said, you have qualities like the Supreme Lord, so you should reciprocate with us. And it's not as if we, we've come to get something for ourselves and nothing for you. We've come to get nothing for ourselves and to give everything to you. So how much more you should reciprocate with us, Krishna? Krishna didn't respond. So then Shimati Radhika, she said, Sinchanganas twadadaram rita pura kena Hasava loka kalagita charit chayagnim No chet vayam virha jar dupayukta deha Jain yama padayo padavim sakete O Krishna, you, are, you told us that we should follow dharma and go back to our homes and serve our family members. That we should follow dharma. So I have a question for you about dharma. If someone, either deliberately or by accident, lights a fire in someone's house and their house is about to burn down, then what is their dharmic duty? Can they walk away? Their dharmic duty is at once, they must immediately put out that fire. That's the, so you are speaking to us about dharma, but you yourself, are you following dharma? Because you have also lit a fire. Oh Krishna, by your beautiful smile, by your 
the loving glance of your lotus eyes and by the sound of your flute you have ignited the fire of calm amorous desire in our hearts so it's your it should be your dharma to put out that fire and this fire is not an ordinary fire it's a vast inferno in other words the gopis desire to please krishna as his lovers that desire is like a blazing inferno so it, it cannot be extinguished with a few drops it should be extinguished with a flood of nectar Amrita Purakena means a flood of nectar. Krishna said, where will I get a flood of nectar from? Even to get just a little bit of nectar is very difficult. You know? How did the Devatas get the Amrita? All the demigods and all the demons, they had to churn the ocean of milk. It was very hard work. And so many incarnations of the Lord, five incarnations of the Lord were involved. Kurma Avatar was underneath the Mandra mountain. One form of Lord Vishnu was on the top of the mountain keeping it steady. Another form of Vishnu, Ajit, was churning along with the demigods. And then Danvantari, another incarnation of the Lord, appeared with the Amrita. And then Mohini Murti. So five avatars of the Lord it took just to get one pot of nectar. And all the demigods and demons collaborating with each other. So where will I get a flood of nectar from. Hmm? Gopi said, Tvadadaram Rita Purakena. Oh Krishna, we know that there's an unlimited flood of nectar in your lips. And by that you should extinguish the blazing fire within our hearts. And if you don't put out this fire, then Vihara Jagmi Upayukta Deha will be like Sati. You know the history of Sati? When she went to the Daksha Yagya because her father had committed an offense to Mahadev, Lord Shiva. So Sati, she wanted to give up her life because that was her connection with her father who was a Vaishnava Aparadi. He made an offense to the great Lord Shiva. So Sati went to the Dakshayaya and she sat in meditation and feeling separation from her husband, Lord Shiva, the fire of separation came from within. And she was incinerated. So Gopi said, Krishna, if you send us home, then we'll sit here and we'll all be incinerated by the fire of separation. And then what will happen? In Gita, Krishna said, Yam yam bapisman bhavam chadyaktanti kalevram tam tam evaiti kontya sadatat bhava bhavata. Whatever you remember at the time of death, you go there. So Krishna, when we give up our bodies completely absorbed in you, then in our next life we'll come back to you. And you will have to accept us. And if you don't accept us in that life, we'll do it again. And we'll do it again and again and again. So, Sakete, if you're our Saka, if you're our friend, why would you want to subject us to this? So either, Krishna, you accept us now, today, or you accept us at some point in the future, but we'll never give up. This is Gopi's prayer. What a love. Have you heard of such a love before? Is there any such love like that in this world? This is a divine, transcendental love. So then Krishna laughed and said to them, Oh, actually I would, when I told you to go home and everything, I was joking. I said, because that's Krishna's nature. He likes to laugh and joke and put people in anxiety. And then, So then Krishna, he embraced gopis and began to dance with them. Gopi said to him, why did you tell us to go home? Krishna said, I never told you to go home. The Gopi said, yes, you said, Pratiyata Prajam, Pratiyata Prajam, return to the village of Braj. Na iha stayam, not here stay. Return to the village of Braj, not here stay. Krishna, I never said that. I said, Pratiyata Prajam, na. Don't go to Braj, iha stayam, stay here. <laughs> Because Krishna is very, very tricky, you see? Nothing about Krishna is straight. Everything he does is crooked. Look how he's standing. <laughs> you see, Gorni Thai, they're straight. Krishna is very crooked everywhere. So Krishna is very tricky. I didn't say go, don't stay here. I said, stay, don't go. So then Krishna began to dance with the Prajagopis. So just as when a fruit is slowly becoming ripe, 
but before it's quite ripe, there's still a little bitterness. So that is called Kasai Avasta. So at that point, when the gopis came to meet with Krishna, and he told them, what are you doing here? Go home. The love is there, the prema ras is there, but there's some bitterness in it. Right? Yeah. But then when Krishna accepted them, and he began to dance in the moonlight on the bank of Jamuna, it was so beautiful. And Krishna expanded himself to dance with each and every gopi. Right? You know that. He expanded himself into millions of forms to dance with each and every gopi. But, by yoga maya, each gopi thought, he's only dancing with me, not with anyone else. 